Welcome to the Prenatal Genetics Gem, produced by the Division of Genomic Medicine at UC Davis. This module will focus on some of the different types of prenatal tests available on the market today and when to use each one. There are two main types of prenatal genetic procedures available, genetic screens and diagnostic tests. A genetic screen tells you the chance that a fetus has a condition, or the chances that an unconceived fetus might inherit a genetic condition. A diagnostic test, on the other hand, is much more definitive. It can tell a patient whether their fetus has certain genetic conditions. Let's talk about some of the different methods used for genetic screening. Carrier screening can be done either before a couple gets pregnant or early on in the pregnancy to inform couples whether they carry a gene for an inherited condition that could potentially be passed on to their children. Information about carrier status of particular conditions informs couples of their risk of conceiving a child with a genetic condition. Carrier screens use a single DNA sample to analyze a person's genome for many different conditions. Some screening panels offer analysis of hundreds of conditions to people from any ethnic background, with or without prior family history of a genetic condition. For a parent carrying a dominant copy of a gene for any condition, there is a 50% chance that the child will not inherit that condition. If both partners in a couple carry a recessive gene for the same condition, there is a 25% chance that the child will inherit the condition, even if neither parent shows symptoms. If only one parent has a recessive copy of a gene for any condition, there is an almost 0% chance that the child will inherit that condition. After a woman becomes pregnant, prenatal screening is done to determine the risk that the developing fetus may have a genetic condition. Today, prenatal screening is done via the analysis of cell-free fetal DNA and is non-invasive. Cell-free fetal DNA refers to the minuscule amount of DNA that is released from the developing fetus in a pregnant woman's bloodstream via the placenta. This can be done starting at about 10 weeks gestation and looks for chromosomal disorders such as trisomy 13, trisomy 18, Down syndrome or trisomy 21, and microdeletions, among other abnormalities. A third type of screen, maternal serum screening, is done using a blood draw from the mother's arm during the second trimester of pregnancy. This test measures several substances in the blood sample to determine the risk that the developing baby may have a chromosomal disorder or a neural tube defect. It is important to keep in mind that all screening tests can only give patients an estimation of the chance that a fetus is affected by certain genetic conditions. It cannot determine definitively whether it will or will not happen. A positive screening test result indicates that the fetus is at higher risk of having a disorder compared with baseline risk in the general population. All positive results should be followed up with a diagnostic test. Likewise, a negative screening result means that the fetus is at a lower risk of having a disorder compared with the baseline risk in the general population, but does not guarantee that there are no chromosomal disorders. Now that we've covered the most common genetic screens, let's take a quick look at some of the most common diagnostic tests available. The two most common methods used today are chorionic villus sampling, or CVS, and amniocentesis. CVS is done by taking a small sample of the placenta that contains cells from the fetus for genetic analysis. During amniocentesis, a tiny amount of fluid is drawn from the protective sac surrounding the developing fetus. This fluid contains microscopic amounts of fetal tissue that can then be analyzed. Both CVS and amnio allow for the analysis of genetic deletions or duplications, specific single gene conditions, and chromosomal conditions. Both amniocentesis and CVS are invasive procedures and impose a small risk of complications to the pregnancy, such as a less than 1% chance of miscarriage. As a reminder, all genetic tests come with risks and limitations, so it's important that your patient has the opportunity to discuss their test results with a genetic counselor. If you would like to learn more about prenatal genetic diagnosis or screening, or would like more information on the genetic counseling services available to you and your patients, the Division of Genomic Medicine is here to help. Our clinic is located in the Mind Institute on the medical campus in Sacramento. You can refer patients to our genomic medicine clinic, visit our website, or call us with questions or to speak with a genetic counselor.